I want to try out Roz features. I need a full graphical install, but I don't want to mess up anything on my desktop. That's the job for LexD containers. <laughs> In this video, we're going to walk through installing ROS in a LexD container. Now, when I say LexD, I'm actually thinking of two parts that are bound tightly together. One is LXD, the Linux container daemon, essentially your hypervisor that we don't have to interact with. On the other hand, there's LXC, which is the command line API version that we're going to be interacting with, and we're going to use that to manage our containers. There's lots more to LexD, but that's enough for us to do what we need to today. Being that it's a container, we can rapidly spin up a new Linux environment, uh, install software, even full GUI software, and then tear it down at any time without impacting our host workstation. We're going to use this for things like trying out new ROS versions, as well as installing a specific robot in a container or a specific simulator within a container. So it becomes really handy for things like that. Prerequisites are simply that you have LexD installed. If you have any questions on how to install it, head on over to linuxcontainers.org. It's the landing site for LexD and follow the instructions over there. We're going to be running this on an Ubuntu 1804 desktop with the LexD snap installed. LexD containers are all set up using an initial profile. We're going to create a profile specific for our ROS containers, and that profile is going to have three parts to it. First of all, it's going to enable a graphical environment for X Windows so we can install tools and use tools like RQT and RViz. Second, we need to configure the network connection so the container connects to our robot network. And finally, we need to enable the raw software repository so we can simply add raw software at any time. So we'll start by opening up a terminal window and then go ahead and create a new LexD profile. We'll call the profile ROS, uh, and then go ahead and edit it. Uh, and first thing we want to do is add an environment variable for our X Windows display. The next thing we need to do is to map our user ID from the host machine into the container. In the container, we know we're going to be using ID 1000, the Ubuntu user. So let's see what our ID is on the host. As you can see, mine is 1000. I have uh, other accounts on here. So I'm going to map the user ID of 1001 on my host to the user ID of 1000 on the container. Next step is to add the repositories for ROS. We're going to do this using the user data section in the LexD configuration file, profile config. This is essentially just cloud init commands. Uh, and there's a section here where we can add uh, an actual command to run as the container is initialized. So we're going to go ahead and add the key, first of all, for the repositories. And then we're going to add two repositories. One is a repository for ROS1, and the other is a repository for ROS2. That way we can use the same profile for both ROS1 and ROS2. Now we have to add the devices. First we'll add the X0 device. That's what we'll use for our X Windows. If you happen to have more than one video card on your host machine, you may want to take a look uh, to make sure that X0 is the right device. We're going to use our NIC type of Mac VLAN that allows us to bridge onto uh, the host network. So that way the container will get its own IP address. It'll behave just like any other host on the network. So let's take a look at what the network adapter is that we're going to bridge. That'll be the parent device. You can either use the IP adder show command or the IF config command. As you see, I have a number of network adapters. I'll pick the one that matches the 
uh, network that's connected to all the rest of my robots. Finally, the last device we have to add is our disk. We're simply going to use the default storage that's in our LexD pool. Go ahead and save the profile and we can use it to create a container. Now we're going to create a ROS Foxy container using the LXC launch command. Use the dash P switch to specify the ROS profile that we just created. Then we're going to instantiate an Ubuntu 2004 image. Now that the container is created, we use LXC exec to open a bash shell inside the container. As you can see, by default, the shell opens under the root user, but we've configured things to operate under the Ubuntu user. So we're going to actually sue into the Ubuntu account. Since we've set up the repositories, we can now just go ahead and install the ROS Foxy desktop. Once the install is done, we need to source the setup file to set up the ROS environment in the workspace. Since this container will always be used to run ROS Foxy, let's just add that to our bash RC file, so that way it'll be included every time we use the container. Source the bash RC, and we're ready to try out a few of the graphical applications in the ROS toolset. One final thing, we'll install Python 3 R complete. This gives us context sensitive tab completion for ROS commands. Now that we have a good ROS profile created, it's pretty straightforward to create a new container with a different version of Ubuntu and a different version of ROS installed. Before we close, let me introduce one more hint. When working with Lexi, it becomes cumbersome to type LXC exec every time you want to connect to a container. And there's some environment settings that don't quite carry over properly. So to improve on this, we're going to create an LXC alias on our host workstation. That preserves the environment and connects to the Ubuntu container as the Ubuntu user. There's a lock packed into this alias. So if you want to understand the details, take a look at the blog post that it's linked in the video's comments. But from here on, we can connect the containers just simply using the command LXC Ubuntu and then the name of the container. So now we've got our basic container up and running. There's so much more we can do, snapshot, copy, automate routines with containers. We can also share files from our file system into multiple containers. More importantly, for our needs, we can also map USB devices into containers. That means you can connect your robot and drive it from a container. As they say, the possibilities are endless, so let me get out of your way so you can start building.